We are live! Hey! Oh, wait, let's do that again. Hey, everybody! Welcome to another episode of Training and We are live right now, as I'm sure you've noticed if you're watching. Uh, we have a very special guest today. We have Brennan from Spillhead Distillery up in the Couch and Valley. This one, like, a little bit uh, more deeply to my roots because this is my, this is my hometown. This is my raw. Yeah, but this is your home distillery. This is my home distillery. I actually, this is my <laughs> with <laughs> Anyway, um, before I totally like ruin the show, um, I'm going to let Brandon introduce himself and tell us a little bit about the whole thing. What do you got going on? What do you got going on? Yeah, guys, thanks. Yeah, my name is Brennan Colbank, and I'm the owner, uh, one of the owners here at Stillhead Distillery. I've been uh, distilling since August 2017. So uh, we're, yeah, here in the Couch of Bali. Yeah, yeah. You got the single malt up there. Excellent. Yeah, so that's uh, one of the spirits we distilled in um, fall of 2017 and uh, just released here in December. Uh, along with the rye whiskey as well. So, so um, big, um, big congratulations to you on the on the release here. Uh, here we'll show them off for everybody. I'm gonna left is right, right is left on this. So here they are. There's the single malt and the rye. So tell us a little bit about the release and how you got to this point where you actually have two whiskeys on the market. Yeah. So what we did to start. Um, we had some ex bourbon cask, uh, Jim Beam, and just playing around, uh, kind of trying to find a style. And we were making some rye, made some single malt. Um, this time, about this time last year, we kind of went and sampled all our casks and uh, kind of decided what we wanted to do. We wanted to build some complexity with oak. So uh, on the, the, sing the single malt, um, I had an opportunity I, um, on some virgin Hungarian oak casts, um, kind of an unusual uh, oak species, at least in the, the spirit world. Uh, and these barrels were custom charred, toasted and charred. So yeah, you can see it all natural color, no chill filtration, um, no color, no color added. And so, not to mention 46, 45 percent alcohol. It, it checks all of the boxes. Yeah, yeah, really. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think we have any intention of adding color or chill filtering whiskey anytime. It, to me, um, I'm, I'm sure you guys the same. You look for 45 plus, 46. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you get the real deal. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the single malt. And I had about uh, seven casts that uh, are officially whiskey now that have been in barrels for at least three years. And, and you're seeing two of them. So, and that's always been, so five didn't make the cut yet and that's okay. Like we, we have a, there was a, a level of uh, a standard that I had in my mind's eye and we thought two of them made it. And so we released them. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And then not to mention the fact that like, we've kind of always said that um, a lot of distilleries, like there's distilleries in the United States that as well intentioned as they are, they put out their whiskeys at six month, months and call them, you know, bourbons or whatever. But it's, you only kind of get this first impression for a lot of consumers, right? So I think being able to actually put out something that is a legitimate whiskey in the Canadian whiskey world and a single malt is very exciting. And the fact that hopefully, I, I mean, you mentioned you have a couple more barrels, but I'm assuming you're going to be aging a few more. Yeah, of course. Like, um, um, the goal with the distillery is one: don't go broke, and that's uh, <laughs> just making <laughs> making whiskey cost a lot of money. Um, but yeah. also to build our build our age, build our inventory, and uh, build our complexity as as we as we uh, move forward in the years. Um, can I pause a second? Yeah. Don't forget that thought. You yeah. got something going on, but why are we already got over. <laughs> uh, but what we have going on tonight is that um, we have our patrons joining us. So we have um, our Patreon page and we have our patrons. And all of those patrons 
are actually eligible to win this bottle tonight. So we have a bottle of the very first release of Brennan's Stillhead Single Malt Whiskey Hungarian Oak Finish. As we, we want to repeat, it is 45% non chill filter, no color added. Checking all the boxes. Um, if you want to get a first release of this, uh, our patrons are going to have a shot at it tonight. You've all been emailed the uh, your specific numbers for the lottery. So, like usual, we are going to use the randomizer app to choose a number, and that number um, will be you know coordinated with the number I've sent you. And uh, one of you guys is going to win this bottle tonight, and Trenny and C will ship that out to you. Um, so that is. Super exciting! That's what we have a little bit later in the show tonight. Um, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna pump the pressure on our show for a, for a few minutes, just a second, just a second. Um, because we have more giveaways this month. We do. We have more whiskey to give away later this month. Uh, we might have um, some artwork to give away later this month. Like we've got so much stuff going on. Uh, it's exciting, right? Like whiskey is exciting right now. There's well, okay, so. Adding to that and just still head distillery, the fact is that we're just so pumped because Vancouver Island, where we live, um, we have like the whiskey community is very incestual. We've realized, <laughs> you know, and, one word and for we it. have, you know, you 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 guys are putting out your first release of whiskey. Um, we have Shelter Point that have been doing it for a number of years now. You know, um, Divine, Divine and a couple of others. But it is becoming Vancouver Island, and I think as long as along with you is becoming uh, a whiskey region. And mm -hmm. if we can become something like that, that is just, <laughs> there's the mac macaroni Caledoni, <laughs> you know, whatever they got going on there. I think they're independent bottlers more than anything, or something more like that. Anything. I don't know what they're so doing. So I'm gonna before we just like go off the rails already. Let's get you to kind of talk about specifically this single mall and no, he did the single mall. Well, I could talk. I could talk a little bit more about it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's get into yeah, this because yeah, yeah. obviously, when you started the distillery, you have to make your money. You don't want to go broke. You made some. We have this here, like a blackberry gin, and you made yeah, vodka, yeah. all sorts of things. So you, it's a way to keep yourself float. But in reality, you started right away with the 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 whiskey. Yeah, and I have, you know, I have to thank my wife and my uh, family on that as we were just, we knew, we seen this coming and we wanted it. I mean, I started the distillery for whiskey, for what you guys have, the love of whiskey. And uh, I always joke that um, I make whiskey and my wife makes money. So I'm able to make a little more whiskey than I, than I could if I had to rely on the income early on, right? Not that we're doing, we're doing great. We're doing great. And the Blackberry Gin, um, we've won a number of awards and um, the sales on that, like, it's just, I just keep making more and more Blackberry gin. In fact, um, right now, as you can see behind me, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, this shoulder. Yeah. I think, uh, you can't quite see it, but I'm a one still system right now. And I'm constantly fighting to, uh, for still time for whiskey, which we're making right now. But, right. So uh, then do you, do you, are you in like, um, obviously, of course, like your distiller is still technically pretty new in the last three years or so. Um, are you now that you have some product out there, you're like in whiskey season where you're making whiskeys primarily? Yeah, we uh, every year we put down barrels. Um, so we have about uh, full size barrels. I think we're at like 110 right now so not a lot but not an insignificant number uh, a lot for us and um we we basically last year it was we were slow in the winter and, and winter is kind of when we buckle down to do it and we were right in the middle of like i bought so much rye like all the money i made at christmas time where we made went right into buying grain right into buying barrels and then the pandemic hit and i thought well we're screwed now because <laughs> we kind well, of, we kind of all that. Yeah. We thought at the time and, and that's not the case at all. Well, it turns but, out, uh, like hand sanitizer was a yeah. big deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was crazy. And, uh, unfortunately there's, unfortunately there's a little bit of, um, spirit that would have been this 
uh, ended up in a little bit of hand sanitizer. So if you get a batch that smells like uh, spicy, and that's probably the rye batch. But people um, needed it, so we just kind of went for it. <laughs> hey, uh, can you see the comments, by the way? If we put them on, we highlight them? Yeah, I can see. I don't... Uh, I don't see this, um, though. Date after 2008, I think that's for you guys, though. So. Yeah, that's for us. That's yeah. <laughs> that's not you, that's us. Um, <laughs> but so speaking of making money, though, um, where can people get the single malt in the rye right now? Where, where will they find it? Yeah, so unfortunately, um, we have some left, uh, but that those two releases are at the distillery only or on our um, web or online store. We just didn't have enough of a release to, um, we're in quite a few liquor stores and it, it, this one we couldn't stock liquor stores with. Um, but I think our next release would be, so yeah, you'd have to go to the, the distillery itself or stillhead.ca um, to order it. And, uh, so, but our next, our next release should be a little bit more widely distributed. So do you ship in BC or how does that work? Yeah, yeah we, ship, okay. we ship in BC, yeah. So let's let's put that up. We'll put that in the comments here. It's stillhead.ca. Yeah, um, it's kind of funny just looking at some of the comments tonight. Like already, we have people that have been watching us forever, but already I've noticed some people that are some new, some new people that might be from Cowichan Valley. So <laughs> hello, all you you fine folk out Cal Val. Yeah. yeah, right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had yeah. immense support here in the valley, especially, but. Uh, all over Vancouver Island um, and NBC, but uh, the island, I mean, just they support our us local companies so well, especially that was really evident during the pandemic because we all lost a lot of uh, certain streams of revenue, you know, Christmas shows, and the ability to pour samples and gain new accounts. So people, mm -hmm. uh, this is a great place to have a business and live too. Totally. I mean, I'm, I'm from that, I'm from, you know, mm -hmm this town that town down the street and it's kind of like this uh perfect little industrial area where right next door to you guys you have a uh, small block brewing which i i don't know if you use some of their their uh if they make some of the you know the the grain spirits for you or the you know the beer essentially the mash um but like and then next door to that red arrow so it's like kind of like this little uh compound of all these Liquor complex. A liquor compound. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're like pretty cool. We're close. Yeah, we're far enough away from town to stay out of trouble and close enough they can keep an eye on us kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and what's really nice is like it's it's the highway goes right past it. So like people will see the distillery and the breweries around there and it becomes like kind of a part of like I said earlier, um Vancouver Island becoming a part of like a whiskey trail, you know? Yeah, yeah, and and I think that's something that'll develop as we get more uh, distilleries putting up whiskey. Right? Can can I make a comment here? I think Brennan, um, you are without beverage at this point in time. Are you? I just have able... a off screen. I can certainly uh, pour some of this in a glass. Yeah, I think, I, 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 think I remember. Yeah, we're in the single malt right now. So right? We're into the single malt. Let's get into that a little bit and tell us kind of like. Because, I mean, I know this, but I want you to tell the people the style of barrels that you age it in, where you got the barrels, how you sourced it, the, the grains, all that. If the, we have a lot of whiskey nerds watching right now. They want to hear the yeah. nitty gritty. Yeah, so um, the grain starts off uh, BC pale malt, uh, two row. So I'm in British Columbia, uh, one of the licenses, or most of us have a craft distillery license, uh, which is... Uh, good in a way because it we have it restricts us to uh, using bc grown grain fruit or honey to make our spirits so we can't use neutral grain spirits we can't do cheeky things flavoring things um yeah but then it does restrict us on what grain we can use um, certain grains are scarce in british columbia and we also only have uh two malting plants that i, I know of uh, one is gambrinus and the others is uh, Phillips's on-site malt right. and Phillips uh, brewing. So uh, the only BC malt available to us is is pale malt, but that's okay. Um, I, I think eventually there'll be some peated malt out there 
or some other modified uh, roasted malts, but not yet. So, um, and then uh, fermentation is uh, usually three days, 72 hours, uh, fairly, yeah, fairly standard temperatures. Um, and then I use, uh, I have an Arnold Holstein and Holstein still behind me. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, yeah. there it is. Uh, and you Germany. ordered that from Germany? I did. Yes, I did. Nice. Uh, so they've been, they've been making stills for, I think, five generations there. Wow. And yeah, 100% copper. Uh, and and uh, this whiskey is, so this is a hybrid pot column still. It's not a continuous system. It One batch goes in the pot at a time. And we can, on the, uh, oh, what side is this going to be? On the side of my face, there's there's one with the least <laughs> amount of side glasses, um, and those can be deleted. So you can, if you want to do like a traditional double distillation, uh, you can bypass those plates. Although it will, okay. there will be more copper contact. Um, this is uh, this single malt is in is what how we typically distill, which is a single pass, uh, four plates, and it ends up around. The spirit before diluting the barrel strength is usually around 78, 79, um, right. which is a pretty typical. Um, yeah, and so that's in, what in, you the put range. in the barrel. Line. Yeah, yeah, and and I and I will say that um, when I first started out, um, apart from my legal at home distillery when I lived in New Zealand, um, <laughs> I didn't I I and and working at a couple of distilleries. I, I mean, you're starting from scratch, right? So you make a spirit that you think has enough uh, esters and flavor compounds uh, to be um, pleasant in three years, but you don't know. So okay. I think that when I started distilling, I started off a little safe, right? And then now I'm building complexity. So this particular release, uh, the spirit, I built complexity, not so much in the age, but well, that builds complexity too, but in that oak cast, those two casts. Right. So you get the the initial X Jim Beam bourbon cast is classic X bourbon notes. Um, and then that's imparted in the spirit. And then a second barrel, uh, a, a very active Hungarian oak barrel. And, and I, I want to add something to the whiskey community, right? I don't, I'm not trying to just repeat what somebody else's success is. So there, I don't think there is any Hungarian Finnish single malts out there. So it's something interesting, right? Like it, it, it's something fun to, to, if you're into different oak and chars and stuff, then you can kind of get like, this is kind of a baseline. It's it's just really a textbook Hungarian oak spirit. So you get like, you get yeah. tons of more spice than sweet. Right? Yeah, so okay, that's what I was gonna say. There's, it yeah. seems like the Hungarian oak, almost you could um, use it in place of like using a rye grain or something. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so you're going to get totally, you're going to, uh, you get what I, I just get, um, not so much when it's finished, but early on into the barrel, I get like a, it's almost like opening a bag of cinnamon hearts for me. Maybe I just ate yeah, too much okay. candy as a kid, but <laughs> <laughs> which is good. And yeah. then I think you get the honey notes. Um, and then maybe like I get nut, nutmeg or clove. <laughs> What's wrong? So, I, uh. I got a, one of the things that kept coming to mind for me on this one was a little bit of like a raisin kind of a note to it, a little bit of like a, a big Newton kind of thing going on. Well, it kind of has some of those like traditional, it's, it's funny because like there's the traditional single malt aspect of it, but yeah. that Hungarian oak, I think with this, like you said, the cinnamon hearts and like just a general mm -hmm. kind of spiciness, but it has a nice sweet and sour kind of thing going on yeah. too. Like, I, I think one thing that I really struck me about this single malt is that like I said kind of earlier we've tasted a lot of whiskeys that are young like it's still considered pretty young mm -hmm. but this has it's great and it has so much room to grow like there's no you know like I don't I don't know yeah. how to really I, I, was, I thought that maybe you're gonna go to the point that like we've like a lot of younger whiskeys that were like really not very good you know, <laughs> well, like, we, but I mean we have we but have tasted a lot of young ones that aren't very good. Well, exactly. And, and, and thing that's is, like, yeah. is, you can tell. I, I think it's just like maybe maybe it's just the couch and valley in my blood or something. But <laughs> those, 
there's, well, there's I, some like, complexity to this that is beyond yeah, a young, a young exactly. athlete. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 the cast. I, they're one thing about um, oak, and, and a lot of uh, tr- traditional French oak might be oak from other European countries, but this one is from the Zemplin Forest, which is a volcanic soil, pretty marginal growing conditions. So the trees are, I think, are 150 years old, and um, and then they just when they when they cut them then the barrel ate the the staves or the the blanks are air seed air dried in the forest so it allows that uh you know the, the fungus and things to bacteria to break it down so um i know the the supplier that for my uh, stainless equipment he's hungarian expat and his factory's in hungary so he he went to these um this cooperage and had these custom barrels made Wow. So we just took a chance. So it's not something that's out, out there. Like it usually Hungarian oak gets uh, toasted and coopered for wine. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's, it's fun, right? Like it's not, um, am I going to put everything in Hungarian oak? Absolutely not. It, but I think that um, you can build complexity with the two species of oaks, right? You get the classic sweetness and, and vanilla and coconut character of American oak. And then you get that spice. And like, like you said, the raisin, fig kind of thing happening with mm-hmm. you know so and i'm not sure like i i future releases like it's just i i don't adding european oak to a, a whiskey just kind of gives it that extra i don't know which we'll get to when we get to the rye yeah um, well yeah well we will get to that rye because there's a couple of questions i have about that, are that are very, mm-hmm. anyway there's a yeah. tiny this a bit there's a tiny bit of this kind of like Really? Menthol, like even a menthol. Yeah, yeah. I think it's almost yeah. cedar. Okay, yeah. yeah. Like Ooh, a cedar. It is. It's like it's like a bit of a sauna. Like yeah. sitting yeah, in a sauna. Was, Hungarian yeah. sauna. <laughs> there's there's yeah. a bunch of big, big fat sweaty dude smell on okay, it. Yeah, stop there. You didn't you didn't have to say Hungarian <laughs> sauna. Now it's just getting scary. Um yeah, when I hit the somebody said the cedar note a friend, and I'm just like, that was a, an awesome note because I think we all want to get like that style and you know i don't know where that cedar is coming from if it's a hungarian oak probably but i hope it's maybe something to do with our with our production um our still and our fermentation because that'd be wicked to have that note no go ahead it's not not a bad note well that's yeah yeah, that's what you're you're looking for your house style what's that gonna be but hey let's not forget that we're giving away a bottle tonight so the one that we're talking about right now is the single malt whiskey from stillhead distillery we are giving one away tonight. Um, if you don't know about our Patreon, go and check it out. www.patreon.com slash trennyandc. And um, that's how you get entered in to win one of these. So uh, we'll be shipping one of these out tonight to one lucky uh, viewer. So, all right. Let's, we haven't even taken Let's let's actually taste the stuff. We've been smelling it this whole time. Oh, let's I, I already it. had like three tastes. <laughs> See that sure. you guys, yeah, and, and and on you talk about on your show, the trying whiskey and, and trying to figure it out, and then just sitting back and having it. And to me, that was the true test of when when I took a cast sample home, put it in a bottle, and sat by the fire on the deck. And it's yeah, how many how many times do you refill your dram, right? And it's yeah. okay, does it pass or not? That was the true test for me, because and we that, want. That um, so true, if you overanalyze it uh well yeah. it's exactly that like what's good oh no okay maybe it's not as good as i thought or whatever yeah. as yeah. soon as you're yeah. not thinking about it and your brain is you know going hmm that's the threat test yeah and for me it was like when i taste the cast that could have been released in december it's like well if you're trying to make it something it's not then just forget about it and it was that's it funny. doesn't just immediately said if it doesn't immediately just oh wow there's something there right like what is that and it doesn't uh taste doesn't have a real burning sensation then i think you got something but yeah yeah and and, and not everything and that's a a sign of a good distiller i think too or just any anyone producing anything any kind of art Mm. really like um don't force it if it's if it's forced and you're not actually feeling it then chances are your instincts are right, you know, or, you know, you just got to have some quality control. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, a quality control, I think, is just like it, it becomes it's 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 just as important here as a large distillery. It, it, it right, every batch we do, we I'm tasting it to all kinds of people, right? It, yeah. it just yeah, you look for look you look for that feedback. Um, in fact, I put it in. Um, uh, I do something similar, allegedly involved in something similar to what you guys do at the Dram Club, and it ended up in a Dram out to people, and people had good things to say about it. So, okay, yeah. we'll we'll release it. And hey, I want to say a really good before, segue. Yeah. To just sorry, I just got to say <laughs> because yes, we are giving this bottle away, but in our I think it's our next. In one of our next dram clubs yeah. in the coming months, we will be giving samples. Yeah, yeah I think we will. We will be giving oh, samples awesome. of the single malt and the rye whiskey. So mm -hmm. we'll get you back on the show uh, when we go live and all the dram clubbers have also had a chance to taste it. And, and then you'll get some more feedback for sure. Yeah, this is awesome. I mean, with the with Whiskey Fest not happening in January, it's like mm -hmm. a hole in our heart, a hole in our hearts. So we got to keep the the whiskey momentum going absolutely yeah are you guys are you guys going to enter the uh qr code for the chance to buy poppy oh yeah oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. every time every yeah. time awesome have you won <laughs> yet never drink it, but yeah. still. Uh, <laughs> we'll squirrel yeah. it away somewhere perfect yeah um uh, oh i wanted to say about the caps even the cat like i had to have uh so cork traditionally leaches uh, sap. So you can't use it with vodka gin. So we use like an artificial, uh, it's like a foam. I'm thinking, sure you guys have seen high density foam on a wood top. But this one, I just had to have the devil squeak. And it, oh uh, yeah. Oh, hang on, it's here. There we go. Yeah, yeah. And right. this cap, and this cork is carbon. Yeah. This oh, cork is oh, yeah. actually, yeah. Here we go, actually, the two caps, right? Yeah, yeah, it's actually we carbon one negative. There. Real. Real cork. Synthetic. 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 You, got, you got to have the squeak. It's just right. part of the experience. Very but the cool authentic. Thing, yeah, the cool thing about these corks is they're carbon negative. What, what, yeah. what does that mean? <laughs> it means that they use, they actually sequester carbon in the cork, like even in shipping and everything, when you use it, because the, the cork tree um, pulled the carbon out of the atmosphere and then they harvested it and turned it into a cork. It's actually carbon negative. So it's right too. That's, yeah. Hey man, that was training. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> carbon yeah. negative too. Oh yeah. So yeah, not awesome. quite. No, I mean, not that quite. is, yeah. you know, that is actually something to think about these days. You know, like that is a pretty, that's that's decision. pretty, pretty amazing. Like that, we have been a lot of thought put into these products. Is that a new box to check? Like over forty percent color carbon neutral. I think yeah. it's a box to check when you're in the industry because there's yeah. just like there's certain whiskeys that won whiskey of the year in the past, and I pull them out and I seen them on your show. The plastic cap doesn't perforate when you try and pull it off, and it's a speed pour, and the label is made of plastic, and it's just like, yeah. come on, guys, like, yeah. yeah, it's just I think natural materials just kind of uh, packaging is it, super important for me. It, it's it actually, makes it all the more natural. This right? is yeah. actually on your gin though, like that is a. Um, are we allowed in the whiskey industry to say sexy anymore? Can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> but sexy label like that purple blue kind of glow that the um yeah. that the black like that looks really good yeah, i mean that's i mean that the, i mean they all look good but i mean that one for, that one pops like on the shelf yeah. i can see people buying that you know hey can i yeah. can i bring up i got to just bring up something that is just a random kind of thing that happened um brennan uh does the the duncan um farmer's market and at one point, the these bottles of the gin and the vodka were in like kind of tall cylindrical bottles. And I was going at, to the uh, the Duncan Market, and they have like wine, and they have all sorts of spirits. And I was kind of getting into them at like ten in the morning. Oh, yeah. And then I, I kind of came to your table. I was like, "Oh, what's this?" And I instantly knocked it over and broke a <laughs> bottle of your your. <laughs> Or it would have been it was probably the brandy yeah it was oh, even worse that's an idiot stick 
<laughs> yeah, it's oh. only like ten, it's only like ten pounds of apples. Way to go! Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was just two hundred dollars <laughs> and ten pounds of apples. No big yeah. deal. Oh, story. Could you actually give me another sample? Then <laughs> I kind of like messed this one up. <laughs> so I just yep. thought I'd uh, mention now. <laughs> sorry, so, sorry about that. That's okay. I'll send you an invoice. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Spill it. Spill Drenny and C. Yeah. yeah, there's lots. Spill C. P.O. Box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Return mail. Um, okay. So I think maybe let's uh, move on slightly here. I'm going to, before we uh, move on, though, yeah. we should mention our Same people that are watching. Let's talk to some people. We have, okay, let's, oh, I got to yeah. scroll all the way back. Holy. Can you do this? Nice. Okay. I can't read in my eyes. So it's a anyway. regular computer. Um, okay. Yeah, I see okay. Quinn back there a bit, and my my friend Matt, Remedy Kitchen, and yeah. So we got Donner Pass Whiskey. JD is on. Joel Gossman, Rem Remedy Kitchen, Brock Nicholson, uh, Joshua Aspland, uh, Marcus H from Finland, Whiskey A, Tim Dietrich, uh, Malton in Montreal, <coughs> uh, Adrenaline Drunky. Uh, that's a good name. I like that. That's good. Um, Ryland Maschak, Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. I think these are new ones to me. There's a few. There's a few new ones. There's Quinn Palmer. Yeah, a Dram Club member, of course. Quinn Palmer. Yeah. Um, so he'll be getting a taste of this. Uh, Kika Bushka is on. <laughs> that's a new one. Um, DMC KY. That's a new patron. Uh, welcome. Uh, I don't know if I said I said JD already. Chris yeah. Beaton. Dusty Road. <laughs> that's great handles. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, that's the game. And don't forget, if you don't say hello, we can't say hello because we see the number of people that are on, but we don't see your name until you say hello. So if we haven't said hello to you. It's your own damn fault. Say hello first. Um, okay, so what do we want to get into? Do we want to do a tour or do we want to? Who's this? Ikebushka. That's my, that's my wife. Oh, okay. Because right, look at that. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. We still have that going. Yeah, yeah. we thought maybe you had a fan. Yeah. <laughs> Your newfound popularity. All right. Um, do we want to do the tour or do we want to get into the next whiskey? What would you prefer to do right now? Yeah. Should we uh should we get into the rye and talk about that? Then maybe you can show us the barrels and stuff because one yeah, thing that yeah, I, we could do that. I did yeah. Yeah, when I visited you got you a month ago or whatever it was, um, you know, the, the <laughs> JD Quinn. barrel was cool. <laughs> when, Quinn Palmer says the guy. most. Yeah. 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 So wait, is Quinn Palmer, which, okay, Quinn, uh, maybe I'm I'm asking Brennan, but I yeah. um, the yeah, question Quinn. is kind of towards Quinn. Yes, yeah, Quinn. Quinn, you are also kind of in the spirit business too, right? Like, What's yeah, into it's fun, all right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like what? Yeah. Brennan, what's what's Quinn's deal? Because Quinn, hey, give us the scoop, Brennan. So Quinn, on, Quinn. Quinn owns. Uh, I don't know. Do I? Is he? I might expose him Batman here, but um, <laughs> no. Quinn. <laughs> Quinn, uh, Quinn uh, is uh, one of the owners at Slime Wine Company and uh, Rootside Provision, or I think they're mixers now. Rootside mixers and bitters. So uh, Quinn That's makes very cool. a kick-ass vermouths and uh, nice. and all kinds of uh, crazy vermouths that are yeah there you go there you go and he uses our uh, vodka spirit to fortify them. Cool. So, okay. so yeah, and, use, kind of like your does he use like your your tails kind of thing? Like no you, no no yeah he good good spirit yeah okay yeah, we okay yeah. Well, the funny thing is that I think like maybe by accident or whatever, but Quinn has kept this from us. So <laughs> Quinn, why aren't why aren't we talking more? Why aren't we talking yeah. about that? Well you know? and, and, and he's and, Bruce Quinn. <laughs> yeah. And Apparently. the connection the connection is that the rye in this bottle was previously the ex bourbon barrel that I transferred it out of uh, went to Quinn and he put vermouth in it. And now it's back. And now it's back here, and um, yeah. something else might go in it. We'll see. That's awesome. It's crazy. And it's crazy. Speaking, it's crazy. Of segue, speaking of incestuous uh, whiskey, <laughs> I have another. But I have a story. I have a story for Trenny too, and a connection okay. to 
Kika Bushka in is Trenny actually called Kika Bushka for a reference for somebody one time. And I don't know if I he did. remembers. Yeah. Important. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? That's yeah. hilarious. Isn't it funny? I don't remember, but I'd like to like maybe off camera get the whole yeah. scoop. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Quinn is saying just released a barrel aged vermouth using an X Rye barrel from Stillhead. I mean, this is cool stuff. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Well, and that's this what the cool industry work. should be about, right? And and what's to me, that's what I mean. We're adding something new that's never been tried before that I know of, and also like that's craft, right? That's something that the larger distilleries can't easily do or as easily. But you see them doing it anyway. Like you just see more and more uh, cask finishing and and collabs and stuff, right? Like it just it, I, it's it's becoming the way it, it's it makes it's sense a, though it's almost like uh when napster came out you know like all <laughs> of a sudden um it was, it was for every for everybody and you had to become more interconnected i don't know if that yeah. makes sense at all but yeah well no. kind of you didn't say limewire yeah limewire that's what i mean that's actually what i use I didn't have the that. st the sti of the uh 2002 pc Lime yeah. water. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I had to. <laughs> so, so, moving on slightly. Right, 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 right. Um, we are going to pour this rye whiskey, which is really honestly very exciting because um, it's kind of like you have to, as a Canadian distiller, like put the word rye on a bottle at some point in your life. So, yeah. Very cool. Also, um, I won't talk too, too much about this, but again, this is very cool because it's a small cask finish. So I, I noticed you didn't say quarter cask or anything. Small mm -hmm. cask, very small, right? Um, 45%. <laughs> this is bottle 164 out of 236. So that's cool. Yeah. So, you no, know, it's not quarter. Quarter cask is kind of an interesting story because there's the quarter cask of a sherry butt, which is 100 liters, but then there's like, 50 liter quarter cast, which is a quarter of a bourbon cast, but uh, the barrels are 30 liters in size and one 50 liter. So this okay. is uh, 20, 80 percent rye, unmalted BC rye. Yeah, and all the color is from uh, the barrel. So this one's got a little darker color uh, with the smaller cast. You're going to get more oak extraction in a shorter amount of time. But cool. the key point, the key point of the small casts is because you can, uh, the risk, uh, the reason whiskey industry uses larger casts is you can over oak a spirit, but these ones are unusual in that they've already been used once, at least once. So, um, you can get that, build that complexity while not extracting like uh, a ton, like a, a tea bag worth of tannin out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I mean, honestly, like I know, uh, when I first came to a distillery and you gave me a sample of both of these, this is my mm -hmm. first nosing and tasting, but I instantly, as soon as I smelled this, like I love that rye note on that. It's so different. Yeah. Like, talk about the, um, the maple barrel. Yeah. So uh, there was a distillery in, sorry, there is a distillery, Woodenville Whiskey in, uh, have you, I don't know if you guys have been, but down in Seattle. And they used to, uh, as, a lot of distilleries do, um, especially in the U.S. It seems like they started putting their whiskey in small barrels. So they did like a rye whiskey, small 30 liter barrel, kick it out in a year or two. And then they, they age maple syrup in it and like they sell maple syrup. So these barrels came up and uh, I bought a few and uh, we were like, it was, oh, wow. Like can we put single malt in it and oh, wow, this is pretty cool. So then I just drove my truck down and bought like, 50 or something like that my truck was like a literally a mountain of barrels and uh <laughs> i had to pay overheight on the ferry and but uh, and they're leaking it was august and they're leaking maple syrup and there's a wasps coming and at the time there's a dog training place next door that they couldn't have their dogs out it was just insane it was insane <laughs> so <laughs> but but they don't um the unfortunate part is they don't uh that Woodenville was purchased by Hennessy Moe, I think, and they don't make that product anymore. So um, I can't get these barrels anymore, uh, but I have- It's really a one-off. This is a one-off kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. There's, I might have small cask finish, but it might be something else. 
next time. Okay. But gotcha. but uh, yeah, X so they X maple syrup, X rye, American oak, char three. Um, I don't know what the toast is on them. Thirty liter black swan barrels. Actually, I have one. I just happen to be sitting next to the pile of barrels. I'll just Hercules one up here. This is oh, two hundred liter. Cool. This is a two hundred liter barrel. Yeah, I'm just a giant. No, this is thirty <laughs> barrels. So <laughs> that's a long time. Yeah, yeah. So they're super cool, and I, I I might get rid of some of them. I'm going to think of some cheeky social media thing to give them away or something like that. I'm not sure yet. Hey, you're training to see, yeah. you're giving away. Yeah. These. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I say that we right now. I'm seeing people saying hello from Newfoundland to uh, New Orleans. Right cool. Now. We got people all over. Cool viewers happening right yeah, now. All over the all over the country and all over the continent and uh, all the news beyond. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. New York, New Zealand, New yeah. Finland. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so oh, about so it's eighty percent unmalted BC rye, and there's twenty percent malt in that. And okay. um, you've probably heard rye is. Uh, probably well one of the most difficult grains to mash distill and or mash ferment and distill um the biggest trouble with it is mashing it it's just uh really uh high in beta glucans i always say it wants to be like a porridge rather than beer mm, yeah. so so the malt helps with the enzyme enzymes to break it down um since that time we've gone all the way to 100 percent rye and we've really um, I don't want to say perfected, but we've worked very, very um, diligently on our rye fermentation and mashing routine. And I have to say that the rye that we made, that we've made since uh, probably in the last year and a half, um, is the best beer that I think we've ever made. Wow. So, yeah. So if you like this, it's it's only going to get better from here. Oh, no. And I, and just to like interrupt that because like again, this is. It's it's not what you would expect from a lot of rye necessarily. Same with mm -hmm. the single malt, but it is different. And like you said, you're not trying to specifically mm -hmm. mimic any other distillery or any other style. So right away, this is different. And if you're saying that already, you're you're much more pleased with what's coming out in the future. That's like I mean that's that's cool for yeah. people. Yeah, cool yeah. I, I, I think this. I think this 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 release like it's just it's very much like it allows the rye grain to shine, yeah. um, and then you've got that complex like rye rye spirit is already complex, um, a pretty complex spirit. But then you're getting the complexity with the different oak finishes. Um, but now the complexity, I would say, the spirit that we made last year, we're actually using a malt whiskey yeast now. Um, which yeah. is a little bit, I think is a little unusual. Um, we just trialed a bunch of different yeasts and what we're getting now. And it's just like, I, I don't know. I don't, it's my favorite spirit to make. Like that's all we want to make now. Is yeah. Why. And, well, I mean, and, and, I was, and if something's shining, might as well. Like, like you say, you gotta, you gotta have a decent amount of stock and if something's working, go for it. But this yeah. has a, Really nice, like sweet and sour note yeah. going on on it. Mm -hmm. So that's so it's so what I did because I like to experiment in whiskey um, was I took when I took this barrel this uh, whiskey out of the cask last year, I spread it to all kinds. I actually took two rye casks and finished it in like a bunch of different barrels. So there's actually a couple other barrels that didn't make the cut. Maybe they'll come out in. Uh, in the future but this one had uh, i'm just looking at them right here there's four 30 liter american oak x maple syrup casts and then the funny thing was is i had this 50 liter and again hungarian oak but that's that's just a coincidence a 50 liter hungarian uh port barrel from oh, a, local, a local vineyard out Alder, zach at alderley vineyard um oh yeah i know zach <laughs> yeah yeah so so that's i I traded him for a barrel or a bottle, but um, I put it in there. And the funny thing was, I was going to make it as two separate releases, but I wanted to make uh, when I married them together, the result was even better. And we tried different um, different ratios, like two 
two parts American oak, one part European oak. And it just happened that the three, the four parts American oak, one part European port cast, which is kind of like, it just kind of clicked for us. So it was, um, that's what, that's the story. And they happen to be all small casts. Um, and, and so when do you expect that release to come out? That's out. No, that's in, that's in this. Oh, okay, so there's, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's some year. Yeah, he was saying the sweet and sour, or the sweet and spice, and that's, um, right. there's a little bit of European oak in this, a little bit. Okay, cool. Yeah. But. So, like, would you expect for the next little while that each of your releases will be, like, kind of, uh, maybe not single cask, so to speak, but definitely, like, these small batch, like, 280 to 500 kind of bottle-type releases for a little while? Yeah, I think um, I think for the next year or two, that's what you'll see from us. Um, it's just because we, we've, we've wanted to... We've, we're playing around and we're developing our style and, and, and also we're seeing, I didn't know what would um, sell the best. And the funny thing was everybody talks about single malt, single malt, single malt. And I priced the rye and the single malt at the same price because they cost the same effectively to make it. But at, we actually sell a little bit more rye than single malt. Well, okay. and, and I think it's just, I think you're seeing that is, is that, um, the there's really a void in the premium rye market really yeah it, it, especially in canada it's it's like alberta premium kicks uh and i don't think it's just because they won that award but they they were just lined up for release number two or lot 40 right lot 40 dark oak yeah. is you know people are looking for that higher abv that premium packaging well, that people right, are that, kind of realizing that there's like this big bold complex complex flavor yeah. um, in Canadian rye. Oh, like, it doesn't like, have to be watered true, down. True yeah. rye, though, you know, yeah. like a lot of, you know, those rye. I don't even think, Canadian yeah. I, I and think Canada. You, yeah, and I think if you want, like, you kind of have to almost be in the know to go yeah. have a 100% uh, rye. Like, I don't think it's common knowledge that Alberta exactly. Premium is the only one that's 100% rye or... Um, so I think there's a huge opportunity there. And we just happened to, so I was really pleased to see that it sold as well or better than single malt because I think 75% of my barrels are rye. <laughs> well, yeah. At least, yeah, probably 70%. And and that's what we'll, we're, I kind of see ourselves as a rye specialist. Well, rye and, specialist. and I, I just want to say like to that, like the, as you're kind of saying, like it's becoming a premium spirit because there's, big bold flavors that are something new and different and yeah. um and, and to the the scotch lovers out there or you know any of these really high profiled whiskeys this act you know this and other high rye content whiskey holds their own to anything yeah. you know what's what's interesting though is that between the two of us we were split like my um like if I had to pick one, I picked the single malt and he picked the rye. So it was like, it was, it was a 50, 50, it's real, right? Yeah. It's really 50, 50. And I, I, I just think, unfortunately the Canadian whiskey industry is, is undervalued their whiskeys. Yeah. Like it, yeah, it's, it, but I, I, I just put it for the same price that I, that single malt and every dollar I make from this is just buying another barrel and, paying the yeah. rent on my barrel warehouse and and uh yeah it sold it sold fine and, and and our equipment is really set up for handling rye whereas some other distilleries like you have to be steam heated you have to have agitators you have to be able to step mash like it's it's a bit of a difficult grain to deal with and we kind of have it licked so that's just kind of what we're we're gonna go for so i i see ourselves as i i, I think we'll always have a single malt um, but I see the rye splitting into, right, like a stillhead rye, 100% rye whiskey, probably either ex-bourbon, new American oak, um, or a combo of both. And then and then those special casts and cast finishes of rye. Me, I think it's the future anyways. Like, single malt is always going to be something huge, and Scotland yeah. is always going to be the place that does it, essentially, yeah. the back, right? Yeah. So why not take something that is as exciting and make it the best, you know? Yeah, Especially and, 
Kenny is already known for his rye, regardless if people know why, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, and I and I think like I like I I'm looking for I'm looking to make a living in this and and release something new and provide an experience. And if you're driving up the island, you hit me and you have like a rye whiskey, and then you head to Shelter Point and you hit all their single malts, right? So yeah. it or Caledonian. So it's it 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 just kind of fits. It feels like it fits right now. Um, yeah. The other thing I'll say is that American rye, as you know, is just like it's kind of just like rye bourbon. Which yeah, is great, totally. like yeah, right? They're yeah. always adding corn and mash, and it's it's. I don't yeah. know. I haven't tried any American hundred percent rye unless they've they've been distilled at Alberta Premium and shipped down there. Yeah, they're usually they're distilled at Alberta Premium. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So time flies when you're you know talking rye. Um, mm -hmm. So we have a, we'll get to it. we have a couple of things to do tonight. First off, we still need to hit the randomizer. Oh, oh, there's some glare. Um, we need to hit the randomizer and figure out who's going to win this uh, giveaway bottle that we have, which is the uh, my favorite, the single malt whiskey. Um, and we want to do a, like a, a quick skill tour as well. You could maybe yeah. just give us a little show of the operation, and then uh, and then we'll do the we'll do the bottle giveaway. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this. I think this uh, selfie stick is gonna follow my mug so okay so you have this little the, show the people the barrels that you have on your shelves right now with the jim beam barrels oh yeah of course yeah so let's go that's the still plant and there's our uh auger system um but big bag of gambrinus malt in there we don't have uh, let me see if i can pan here we go oh yeah. no it's there i like i'm so backwards with this thing and it wants to like try oh, no. <laughs> yeah, we, we've, we've used this thing like a hundred times and it's still like your left is right, right is left. It's like driving a boat or something. Yeah, so we're pretty, uh, okay, let's just have a look. Um, so there's our grain. You know what I'm going to oh. do? I wonder if I can just rotate my camera. I don't want to oh, this good. thing out. It's good. It's good. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's good. Okay, so I'll just try and see. He always wants to track me. <laughs> yeah, just stand in front of it. <laughs> Okay, I'll stand in front of the barrels. Okay, so yep. there's my warehouse. Yeah. Um, some bottles, some gin, a bunch of grain. There's some more barrels. I got some hundred liter barrels, which I actually make an apple brandy. Um, and then there's some. The stuff needs to go to the warehouse. Um, so those barrels aren't full yet. I don't think most of them. And then these are some of my full barrels. So my mm. dad made this kick-ass rack um Great. behind yeah. it is the tasting room so and then up there is some um, oh those are apple brandy apple brandy barrels um yeah so let's just have a look here what i've got because i wrote on them so that's a 2018 i don't know if you can read that yeah. oh that's a yeah. malted wheat barrel whiskey okay oh wheat whiskey is weird okay it uh it needs time <laughs> It tastes weird, eh? <laughs> no, it just it needs a little more time than you think. Um, okay, so I got that. Man, this is okay. I see now. So, this do you do you, do you distill and age each grain separately then too? Uh, yeah. I, no, when not you, all. Sorry, I do now. I do now. But so if we, you look, there's a certain right. cast that uh, man. This I, thing I saw, is just. I saw a 2017 up there, but I mean, so for example, the wheat, is the wheat done all by itself? Yeah, that was 100% wheat whiskey. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I really, for the first year, I fooled around on making uh, whiskeys just to see what would happen. So like barrel one, which that's not going to be released for a long time. Um, yeah, that was made in September and it's like 50% rye, 40% malt, 10, 10, uh, um, 10 wheat. So it's kind of like, almost like a bourbon mash. And then I did make some not bourbon, some Canadian with like using a bourbon mash bill, uh, Canadian, sorry, American Oak. Um, and I have, uh, that's, uh, how old is that now? Just over two years old. So that'll come out at some time. I don't know what I'm going to call it because I'm I can't call it bourbon. Um, and then oh, there's a barrel that's leaked a lot. I don't know if you can see that. 
Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. If you wonder why whiskey costs a lot, that's why. <laughs> yeah, because it's all going <laughs> up, up and out. Yeah, you can see like that one. I don't know if I can see. Yeah, that one's leaking. But maybe if I stand back, you can see more. There, oh no, we can, yeah, you can see them. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's so all, there's a couple it's missing. All just character. It's all just character, right? Like. Yeah. Um, and then the rest are at uh, the warehouse now. So here, I'll go in the front here. Um, yeah, there you go. So that's the front door. And they greeted with barrels. And uh, when you first come in, I think you get the big whiskey hit, and then you kind of go nose blind to it. Well, and you know what? Like, Penny and I sat down there, you know, obviously in, in better times and had some mm -hmm. great cocktails there, which was really oh, fun right that you can, you can come in there and just – you know, sit down and, uh, and, and be served some cocktails and try all kinds of different things, which, uh, which was awesome. I remember all of the cocktails that we tried there were, were really great. Yeah. People love those little cocktails and now it's, you know, it's plexiglass to the nine, right? Right. For your safety. Yeah. And this barrel rack is actually going to become the next cask ownership barrels. So I did, I do have some cask owners with the smaller barrels, but I actually have custom uh, virgin oak barrels coming in February, and they're all going to get filled here. There's 36. And basically, if you want to own a cask, like your name will go on it, but you, you own like 40 bottles or more, and then the distillery owns the rest kind of thing. So okay. To decide. Yeah. So that's kind and of when, a... When will the details come out on that? Next month. Yeah, that'll, oh, come, out, that'll yeah. come out on my Facebook, yeah, Instagram. I just have to put it together and figure out how much it's going to cost. And, okay. But, yeah, and then you'll have the choice. We'll be doing single malt and rye. Oh, so, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And I've actually got uh, – I've been working with a cooper. Um, it's really cool because getting barrels here is uh, can be very difficult. Um, get good barrels that are, don't leak, um, fresh ones, are, are, and then the shipping is atrocious. So I'm actually – I have a, I rented a warehouse that I keep a bunch of my stuff at. So now I can take a whole, I have the space to store barrels, but a truckload is like 288 barrels. Um, but I'm splitting it with a couple other distilleries. So I've got, this has allowed me to get custom made barrels. So they're going to be, basically I sent them, I'll even send them a sample of my rye spirit and, and the flavor profiles that I'm looking for and they'll custom toast and char them. So, oh, wow. yeah, it's going to be, I'm super excited about it. Um, okay. So this is following my face. Oh yeah. There's some Hungarian oak barrels up here. Okay. So they, they're pretty fancy, all sanded, <laughs> um, gal, galvanized, uh, hoops and yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what else is going on? Yeah. So here's the, you're moving your barrels. What's that? What splinters when you're moving your barrels around? Oh yeah, for, yeah, you get them a lot. You work got to sand your barrels. Yeah, not those ones. Those ones have been sanded and they come like all packaged, nice. But the bourbon barrels, they're brutal, and those slivers hurt. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So okay, maybe I'll go up on the. I don't know if you can see this catwalk. Uh, oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. Okay, so this is the steps that we take, like probably. A million times a day um so we've got three and i'm always getting this backwards three three fermenters you can see this one. Oh, that was pretty smooth yeah good bubbling away away it's bubbling away yeah it's doing its thing this one is i don't know why it's following me like that this one is toast um and that one is chugging, chugging along. It's hard to see cool. with this. Yeah. Um, and this is, this is our auger system. And I don't know if you can see down in there. There's, I'm in a vessel now. <laughs> just, there's it essentially. This thing is pretty sweet. <laughs> it's like a smooth selfie stick. Uh, yeah. And there's the still. So here, I'll try and do a pan. It's kind of like almost being on a flight simulator and like, you know, the the, jo the joystick is toggled backwards. Yeah. Stick us inside See. the still. 
<laughs> yeah, I will. Okay. So yeah, there's, this is a good place for me to show. So the alcohol vapor comes up this way. And then this is the tube selector. Oh my God. This is the tube selector. So it could, this column here is the vodka <laughs> column. So this would produce 95% spirit. Um, and if we go to this column here, this is what we would use for stripping with the four mm -hmm. plates. And then this is a deflagmator, which is like a pre pre condenser kind of thing. Um, yeah. Okay. Here, I'll take you in the still. I gotta see if I can flip the camera orientation without freaking it out. Um, yeah, I don't want to risk it. Okay. I'll have to do it this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of dark in here. Oh yeah. This is a pretty cool. Oh show. yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, I'm whiskey. This is the first time Trenny and C have been whiskey. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be distilled now. <laughs> oh, we're delicious. Yeah. So, yeah, well, it looks pretty clean in here. Mike did a good job cleaning. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. This is the first. Yeah, there you go. So, they make the manhole. Uh, I've never been in the still, but sometimes I have to reach in here. And this is like, this is. This is a size 30 jeans only. <laughs> Get in yeah. Put it that way. Yeah. I think it's like made so you don't, they don't want you to crawl in. It's just like, you, don't. If you have, to, you really have to, you really have to think about it. If you and make a conscious decision, like, is this a smart thing for me to do? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usually, yeah, and usually it's not. Well, yeah. Not usually it's great. not. If it doesn't so, fit, you must have quit. Yeah. It's a, it's yeah, dangerous. exactly. So yeah, and then there's the column, pretty tall, sixteen and a half feet, and then yeah, the alcohol. And how vapor. many bubble plates do you have on it? This has uh, twelve on the uh -huh. vodka column, and then four here um, on okay. this stripping column. So, man, I'm gonna get my hands right. Nope. I'm Explain back to again. the people what the stripping column does. Yeah. So so in each of these plates is like a a welded welded plate let me see if i can do this um, okay okay this is me we can't see i don't think we can do this i need more time to prepare oh hang on i might get it it's wanting to track and find something that it's oh i can almost get it you can almost be in there yeah yeah hang on it's like this selfie stick is too it's like smart, too smart for its own good. Too game. aware, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like aware. stop the AI. Like, just let me look it's in. Learned the okay. <laughs> it's made by Cyberdyne system. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. We can't. Well, there we go. You can't really see in there. Very good. Yeah. Uh, but there's a bowl. There's a bowl in there, and what happens is you flood this plate. Um, and it forces that alcohol vapor up through the liquid that's condensed in there. So it's kind of like a separate distillation in a way um, every time. And, and what you're doing is you're building the more plates, the more temperature separations you're building. So this pot might be boiling at, let's say, uh, it's not following me. This pot might be boiling at uh, 90 degrees Celsius. Um, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Uh, the top plate will be boiling at like 78, which is very, very close to the, the temperature of that ethanol evaporates at. It's almost pure ethanol. And that means that only the ethanol can remain in vapor form and, and the heavier elements or the heavier chemicals come down and are forced back into the still. So the more, uh, the more of that, the more purity you get, the less flavor. Mm. Right. So yeah, you um, want some of those heavier things in it a little bit to carry on the flavor yeah and the way the way this one works is you can either um on the stripping column you can let me see if you can see my hand on the handle this can just like flip it up and open like and effectively oh, yeah. you can just open the whole thing and it just goes straight up right um, okay so it's just one big yeah. column if you want yeah exactly and you can kind of control um by cooling the top of this you can kind of force it into reflux so it's 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 not uncommon. Um, I th it typically for single malt, it's more more typical as a double or triple distillation with the pot still. But for grain whiskeys, it's a lot of it's distilled on the column. Yeah, mm. I will say that we may. Um, I am planning on expanding the distillery here in the next 
this year um because we're just not the nice is thing that, about the is that sorry i to interrupt but is that the, like the training and sea wing that you're expanding to yeah <laughs> okay. i like the, um no it's it yeah we would we need more still or bigger still and mm -hmm. um whatever i get will be specifically designed for distilling rye whiskey like this will yeah. remain this is this is the Swiss Army knife or the German Army knife of stills. Like you can do, you can make just about anything with this still. But I would say now that I have this, then I would probably um, buy stills specifically for whiskey. And I haven't decided quite the configuration yet. Um, but it'll probably be bolder rather than less bold. Okay. Or uh, because now I can use this. I would like to dedicate that for making vodka and gin. The other the other problem with having one still is when you make gin, like you have to be incredibly careful to not uh, cross contaminate that right. product into another yeah. into your whiskey or your vodka. And the way I do it is not only do we clean the heck out of it, but then the next we do a following distillation, like a vodka or like a spirit run distillation. And then we just set that aside for gin. Right. right just in so case then, it has yeah so then do you because like you said you don't want to cross contaminate do you what is your jill gin like a steep style or is it like vapor yeah. infused no okay. not vapor infused yeah i don't have a vapor basket on that um it's mm -hmm. yeah it goes directly in the pot which the pot isn't the biggest problem it's actually the condenser uh there's a condenser mm -hmm. oh That's, yeah that would be yeah you, how do you yeah. get that yeah, yeah. so the best so it's worked well for us. Like I haven't um, detected any botanical flavor in anything, um, but that's kind of the idea is that um, if I buy a whiskey, when I expand, if I just buy whiskey stills, then I can dedicate that to whiskey. I can make uh, vodka and gin the rest of the year on that one. So, but is there, I guess, is there money in whiskey versus like, obviously, <laughs> you know, like, is whiskey just a passion project yeah. because like, you want to be known for your whiskey, but like in all reality, you know, it sounds like there's a lot of money that goes into making whiskey versus some of the other unaged or well, where you minimally yeah. aged. Pump it out in a month and yeah. it for I mean, three or four years. I mean, I don't think there's any easy money in distillery <laughs> distilling, um, right. but definitely the yeah. Definitely, whiskey creates uh, cash flow cash flow challenges yeah. in that you've got more cash going out than coming in for a number of years. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think there's a saying that you make you make whiskey for your children to sell, um, <laughs> right. which just yeah, doesn't yeah. happen. So it doesn't. So yeah, my my son or daughter or both will inherit a distillery that's yeah kicking ass and making tons of money. I'm sure. And a bunch yeah, of whiskey yeah. barrel age, but no, it's not. It, also, <laughs> to, answer, awesome. to answer your question, yeah, like it, it, uh, there's, there's a lot better ways to make money quicker. If that's what you're in this industry for, is to make money, then it probably is the wrong industry. So, right. yeah, it, 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 I'm in it because it's a passion. Like, I, 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 it's not work anymore. Right. You like, at least clearly love doing it. You yeah, it. it's fun, yeah. right? Like, it, yeah, you're like, oh, let's get this barrel and let's put this in it and let's see what happens. Well, okay. and I, I got to interrupt a little bit because we were discussing earlier, uh, just C and I, like, and we, we got to do this bottle giveaway in a minute here. But I just want to say, like, you kind of, you know, you quit your day job to start a mm. passion and you're kind of living the dream for a lot of these people watching tonight that, like, you know, in, including ourselves you know like mm -hmm. how cool is it that you actually followed through with this and it's starting to you know it will take off right yeah it already oh, cool. I mean, like, oh, what was the what was the the uh the triggering the, the moment, triggering yeah, moment yeah. like it's, when did when, a boss like say something stupid and you're like you know, <laughs> fuck it i know <laughs> you know you know what my uh i don't know what there wasn't one moment um it would probably be we ended up in these planning sessions and um i i had a great former employer they treated me very well paid me very well um but when you work for a for-profit company 
that is a, you know publicly owned it's really always about the bottom line so right. that just kind of wore down on me right it's just like well if we didn't if the company wasn't i didn't secure more contracts then then we needed to like take a haircut and and I don't have that much hair to begin with. So it, it, it was, <laughs> hey, you it was love. Yeah, 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 there you go. But uh, I think it was just, I, Couch and Valley has been my home for uh, just about 17 years and I wanted to work here and I wanted to do something here. And um, I liked whiskey and had fun <laughs> making it. So I don't know, it's just like, I, I think we were probably um, not oblivious or it was, it was, I'm glad I did it. it I didn't know how hard it was. I knew it was gonna be hard. I didn't know it would be this hard, but yeah. Well, but that's I mean, what the but, yeah. If you have all, you know, like when something's hard, then it's very rewarding when it takes yeah. off, right? Yeah. Well, and it's, it's it's like everything has comes together with timing and all sorts of things. Like right now, like we talked about earlier, like this is a time when people are really paying attention to craft distilleries and craft breweries and all that sort of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I really do think, like, I, I think you guys are spot on with um, Vancouver Island's going to be, like, it already is, and it's going to be the happening place to go for, it already is for beer, and, like, now we're a designated wine uh, um, region, and, and it's 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 already becoming a whiskey scene. And gin, yeah. huge gin scene, right? Like, I mean, like, we got, you got Empress Gin and Seaside Gin on the same island. Yeah, we always hear about sharing them too. Sharing. Well, yeah. Yeah, Seaside. Yeah. Seaside, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, those are like two huge, hugely successful gins and Ampersand and uh, and myself. Another I mean, Valley. I mean, yeah, yeah I put Blackberry gin. So there's already like a huge like gin scene going on. And I think whiskey's just the next thing. Just takes yeah, time. It just takes a little longer. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Let's uh, let's do a bottle giveaway. So we're going to give the bottle away here. Um, and we just got to say thank you again yeah. for sponsoring this show tonight and being able to, uh, like, as money. everyone here has been watching and seeing, like, it takes a lot to put um, the liquid in this bottle. Like, this is an end result, but it takes a lot to get here. So yeah, thank thanks, you so man. much for supporting this, our yeah. channel, and everyone watching for supporting, you know, Brendan and Stillhead. So Hey, why don't you uh, grab? Yeah, let's make a. We're gonna make a cocktail while we're waiting. Gin. We're gonna make a. We're gonna make a wild blackberry gin cocktail while we're doing the giveaway because uh, uh, we already popped the top on this and uh, gave <laughs> uh, gave a sample to Mrs. C and Mrs. C is in approval and we did the um, we did. Wild blackberry gin with some with some uh, club soda, yeah, and perfect. we did a nice uh, lemon wedge in there. Squeeze the lemon wedge, and just absolutely fantastic. So we're gonna do one of those for ourselves as well. So again, we are about to give away the Billhead single malt whiskey, and. Um, so patrons, anybody that is a patron of Trendy and C, go to your email now. You will see we have emailed you a number. That number is between number one and 333. So if you look on my phone, it is set for a minimum one, maximum 333. So whichever number comes up here from the randomizer, that person is the winner of the bottle. So let's find out who it is by pressing randomize get back 181 probably uh rylan congratulations 181 okay <laughs> let's find out that yeah it's probably, probably that's a high it, that's a high proof high proof yeah, yeah. that's good that's the good stuff right there 181 is dude it's rylan mass chat <laughs> 181, you said it right there. I just made that up. That's almost not fair. Look at, no, it, it is what it is. Here's a spreadsheet. Oh, here's the spreadsheet. You can see where's Ryland's name. Ryland, and his first number is 181. He had numbers 181 to 200 right there. Ryland Maschak, 181. So, so hey, congratulations, congratulations man. 
Maybe you can turn this into some bitters. <laughs> no, that was Quinn Palmer. Oh, sorry, Quinn Palmer. Sorry, I yeah. was the wrong guy. But Rylan Maschak is local. Oh, he also, okay. he's the That's other. Awesome. He's awesome. The other so, so woo! Congratulations. Yeah, um, we do have to say that there are still multiple giveaways this month. We have um, coming up. We still have um, uh, Great Plains. Yeah. Just show the bottle. We have Great Plains Craft Spirits coming up later this month. And we are giving away Great Plains. Another Canadian whiskey. That's an 18 year old. We're giving away some of this stuff this month. We also have, um, we've just received this package in the mail from Emily Mercedes. And Emily Mercedes. It's the biggest bottle in history. <laughs> <laughs> the giant all can. So Emily Mercedes makes this artwork that we have on the wall behind us. So she has made all this whiskey artwork and she has sent us some of her new production and uh, we'll be giving those away. So we have some awesome stuff going on yeah, here. So it's happening on training. See in the next couple of months and clearly lots happening at still. And uh, so where's our cocktail. So we're going to make a cocktail before we yeah. let you go here. Um, we have this uh, nope. again. Oh, where is it? There we go. The still head wild blackberry. Tint. Yeah. Yeah. Look at yeah. It. That's beautiful. This is probably one of your be best, I mean, you've it's your yeah, first it, yeah. release when you open the distillery. It is winning awards. It is doing very, very well. It is delicious stuff. And you can go to stillhead.ca, right? right? Yeah, that that one's in liquor stores throughout BC. Okay. And you can get that. And, and if your private liquor store doesn't have it, you can ask for it or just send us a note. But uh, okay. yeah, that, that one's the one I have. Uh, I worry about keeping in stock like not worried i'm going to keep it in stock but it's it's like oh when do i need to make it again um and it's not right. easy to make it's all we get all those blackberries at our front doors it's all local pickers um we just put the word out and they come and two dollars a pound and i think one year we bought uh this year was challenging i, I um with covid i don't there wasn't as many pickers but the year before i bought fourteen thousand pounds blackberries oh wow, wow. Yeah, oh, and, and it was all... And that created, yeah. what, five or six bottles or so? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, and we juice them at a local winery, Enrico Winery, lets me use their bladder press, and it's very much a cool. very couch and very couch and product. So Could we're we happy come and to have... on them next year? We'll, be, we'll get our <laughs> dirty, grubby feet in there if you need us to. Yeah, if you want your hands to be purple black for a week, then yeah. come on down. Yeah. Um, by the way, I, that's Ryland. He's oh, watching right perfect. now. He wants a while. Awesome. So I got to say, though, uh, obviously, when COVID has uh, relaxed a little bit more, we're going to go to the distillery and we are oh, going yeah. to. I mean, we haven't talked about to Brandon about this yet, but we're going to make. Haven't even talked to me about. I haven't this talked yet. about anyone who was. But <laughs> we're going to make the Trini and C batch there. Oh yeah, live on camera. I want to hear more. <laughs> yeah, about let's that. do it. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. I'd but no, we'll do we'll do some kind of video at your distillery, and I think that'd be really cool for people to watch this tonight, and then to actually get the more virtual hands-on experience, right? So yeah, this is sure. a bit of Drinko Plinko, but with actually good ingredients. So we've got the uh, the blackberry gin. We've got a little bit of soda water, so club soda, wedge. and a lemon wedge squeezed into it. So that is a cocktail and a half right well, there. Thank you for uh, joining us tonight, Brennan. And if you could uh, stick on the line for a, a few minutes, and we'll we'll chat. But everybody else, thanks for watching. It's been fun. We've had a really great audience tonight. Some some good numbers, some good viewership. That is the question. Oh, Anyone in BC right now? Uh, is there oh, yeah. anywhere else besides BC right now? <laughs> yeah nowhere else in the world nothing else going on okay, okay. you got to come to bc and get this get over here guys <laughs> so thank you for joining us tonight um click like subscribe leave a comment and uh you know follow brennan on um instagram and facebook and all the places you can what's your what's your handle on instagram uh just still head distillery all one word awesome okay yeah cheers guys thank you everybody thanks, thanks everyone